thing for the good of them that love him, for the good of them who are called according to his purpose. Our address, physical services, 106 9th Road, King, in Johannesburg. My number is plus 27824569264. You shall surely be blessed. May God bless you, and I look forward to receiving you. Amen. Amen. This is Abi Adeniba. I'm the pastor of Shekinah Fellowship Ministry, and I'd love to give you this invitation to you and your family to join us on our services. On Sunday morning at half past nine is Bible class. And also at 10 a.m. is our celebration service till 12 noon. And also we stream these services from 10.30 for those of you who cannot make it to in-person service from half past 10 to 12 noon as well. And I want to just encourage you that come the way you are and I promise you by the will of God, you will leave a different person. Also, a midweek service is Tuesdays at half past six on Tuesday. That's a live broadcast on my Facebook at facebook.com And that we give you curriculum from our Shekena Institute, which is on leadership and entrepreneurs. So please join us and you'll be blessed. Our address for in-person service is 106 9th Road, King, Santi Johannesburg. My number, my WhatsApp is plus 27824569264. I look forward to receive you and may God bless you for receiving this invitation. God bless. Amen. Good evening, everybody. Good evening to you all. If you are watching me for the first time, my name is Abe Adenigba the pastor of Shekinah Fellowship Ministry and the convener of Shekinah Institute. So I'm here tonight to continue on some words that I'm preaching about or talking about or conversation kind of um, regarding as we end up the year 2022. And um, I know that, you know, the, we, we are all not the same, but at the same time, I believe that the word that I'm here to share with you is just to, you know, to give you peace as the year rounds up and to set you up for the coming year because the coming year is the coming opportunity. The coming year is going to reveal new strength, new potentials that you have not even known before. But you need to get prepared and, you know, get yourself ready to maximize the coming year, no matter how this year has been for you or for myself as well. And so last week, I began a series that I titled The Year End Self-Audit. And what was I talking about or my intention of this topic is as well just to give ourselves some assessment of the year. Um, what have we been able to do right? What have we not been able to do right? What have we achieved? And what is it that you have not achieved? But, you know, that, and that is why the new year is coming. And then you have another opportunity. We all have another opportunity to get into the new year and do something wonderful for our lives, our family, our careers, our ministry. In the name of Jesus. Let us pray. And so, our Lord, we, we thank you tonight. I pray, Lord God, that the word of tonight shall bring more insight. I pray that someone shall be encouraged by the session of tonight in the name of Jesus. Amen. So, I welcome you, and I pray that tonight shall be wonderful. Now, the year self-audit, um, like I've explained, is to prepare us for the coming year, is to have a sort of self-appraiser, a self-appraiser of yourself, of what you have done for yourself this year, what you have done for other people this year, and how deep were you with your God. Uh, last week, I mentioned three factors by which, you know, we, we all thrive. Um, I mentioned three parameters, the, your spiritual, your economy, and your social. And we look at those three areas, what have 
What can you say that you have achieved? Were you close to your God from the beginning of this year? How was your personal economy this year, your financial goals? And again, on the social front, I also mentioned what is your social uh, quotient? How were you able to do things with other people? Did you get involved in other people's life or is just about yourself? So those are the areas by which we assess as well. And then I mentioned that in all these achievements or losses, it's for us to prepare for a better coming year. And so whatever you do for other people is part of your achievement. Whatever you do for other people to reach their dreams and their purpose in life is part of your testimony for the year that is coming to a close. And so today, I want us to look at a certain approach to conducting year-end audit. Certain approach. And we're going to look at some sources by which we can do this self-audit. Now, the word of the Lord for you tonight, I will take from Jeremiah chapter 29. Jeremiah chapter 29. It may be popular or to you, or you may not know it. Jeremiah 29, in, from verse 10, I'll take it from verse 11. It says, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. And this is the word of the Lord. And by which I believe you began the year with you. He said he has a plan for you. A plan for good future. Hope. In other version it says to have an expected hint. And I want you to know that no matter the year that, we, that is about to run out, the plan of God still exists. And you cannot fold your hand and say, no, this year has been somehow either horrible or not too good for you. You didn't get a job. You didn't get married. But I want you to know that the God's plan is his plan. He says, he that is faithful, would he not bring it to pass? And so it is. So you need to continue in good attitude with your faith to ride in the plan of God for your life. And so you don't have to look back on what did not work well for you or what you think you may have achieved. In fact, what you have attained this year is still not the end of the of the plan of God. And so you need to continue to move. Don't make it a set point. I'm going to touch that tonight by the grace of God. Don't make your achievement this year a set point. Don't make even the failure a set point. You must have a set forward attitude into the coming year. Now, today I want to look at the approach by which we conduct self-audit. And there are sources, you know, we have to identify the sources of this um, self-audit because it's a concept that you may not get, you know, the true report or assessment from a third party. And so you need to find a way to look into yourself, to look into your life, to look into your what you do, your vision, your dream for the year. You may not get it elsewhere. No one may come to you. Like I said last week, you may be a leader and people find it difficult to even tell you the truth. All they do is to clap for you. But then there are things that you know yourself that you're not getting right. And there are things they know that you are doing wrong, but they cannot tell you. So through the sources I want to identify tonight, you are able to you know, gain um, this self-audit and address it going forward. Now, um, these sources are familiar to us, and some may not be familiar to you. Like the account auditors, account auditors, you know, they look at the revenue. They look at expenses. They look at the sources of your revenue. They look at the sources of your expenses. They also, the account auditors, they also look at your assets, 
and your liability. Which one is rising? Is it your asset is rising or your liability is rising? Of course, they want your asset to rise. And so I'm using these parameters or this concept to let us know that there are things you may need to increase in this in this year going forward such as the area of your strength such as the thing that you have done well where you have grace you need to cre increase in where you have grace and where you are having uh, challenges or you you having some trouble of course you will work on it and you can get people to help you there and if there's no one to help you there just believe in the lord amen now the approach of self audit it includes Sources like conducting inner self-reflection, inner self-reflection, and self-critique. You can type it. Number one that I want to talk about tonight is inner self-reflection and self-critique. Number two, we're going to look at external criticism. External criticism and there you plan going forward. Your external criticism, also we're going to deal with it at some point and how we reach out for help from other people that are superior in certain areas of our life, such as your personal coach, your counselors, your spiritual fathers. You can have a session with them to review your activity as at the end of the year or your career counselor. You can reach out to them. They can point one or two things for you. So those are external help. And then external criticism are some of the things that people talk about you that you happen to hear. You either work on it or you disperse it. That is what thing. So tonight, let's look at the area of, um, I would want to start with self-critique. And then we look at inner reflection. They're very, very similar, but, but different. Now, number one, self-critique, this is the ability to critically judge yourself. You know, it's really what you need to practice. You need to learn to judge yourself and judge your actions. Assess your effort. Assess your effort during the year. And when you assess your effort during the year, you are able to come to some uh, decisions. You are able to come to some decisions. Some efforts may be wasted. Some efforts may be, you know, fruitful. Negative or positive. This is what your self-critique can give you. What you did right and what you did not do right. You can also, you know, get some of this advice there because um, I want to just type it on my line uh, what I'm talking about right now so that you can really um, uh, you know follow me on this because it's so important it's so important that we we understand this um, uh, concept that I'm talking about it's just God given now so self critique is for you to to assess yourself during the year. Those things that you did right and those things that you did wrong. It's like self-criticism. So when you look at self-criticism, you know, let's make one example. If somebody is criticizing you face to face, they criticize you to your face. It's good. But in this concept, self-critique is it's like you put a mirror before your face. It's like you put a mirror before yourself, your, fa your, your face, and of course, it reveals who you are. Just like I'm looking into a camera right now, it reveals who I am. If I have any debts, anything on my eyelid, on my head, I can remove it. And so it is that when you conduct self-critique to do your year-end assessment, your year-end year audit, you are able to hold a mirror of your effort, of your activities, and the things you have done. And then you begin to pick out what was it that went wrong, what was it that was right, and what you did right. And so that you are able to move forward positively. Because, you know, no one is perfect. We are all fallible 
humans. I mean, look at what happened in the Gospel of John chapter 8. I love that. You know, a, a, a certain woman was brought before Jesus to be judged for adultery according to the law of Moses. Then he said to those Jewish elders who brought the woman, and Jesus said something. He said, he that is without sin among you, let him first cast a stone at her. In other words, he's ask, he was asking them to look into their life if they had no sin. And if you had no sin, be the one to cast. So what I'm saying is this, as a fallible human, we don't have it all. We don't have it all. We don't have it all. And I, that's why I'm trying to encourage someone that this year may not be, may not have been the way you expected from January, but you don't have it all. So through self-criticism, you are able to identify certain things that you can work with, and you are able to identify certain things that you may need to drop. And that is what I mean by self-critic. The ability to identify also what is missing in your life. What is missing in your life? You are able to identify in self-criticism or self-critique, you can identify the inadequacies, inadequacies in your career, in your business or trade, the inadequacies in your ministry. You can identify it before someone tells you and then you know the point by which you can walk forward, not working back for, not working backward. And so what I'm saying here is this, when you perform a self-critique, you are able to identify what is inadequate and what is insufficient or inadequate. You are able to identify the help that you need. And you are able, you know, to see what you may have to put aside. Therefore, self-criticism is the way to find completion in the coming season, in the coming year. And self-criticism, self-assessment will surely help you. Therefore, I'm saying today, this self-criticism is one of the sources we can approach to audit our personal growth during this year that is about to finish. It's a way for us, it's an approach for us to assess our life. And then we can look out for what we need. We can look out for help. Because if you don't do a self-critique, you will just look up for anything there and just grab it. It includes assessing your ministry, assessing your business, and then you know what help that you need. It's going to help your point of association. It's going to help the people that you need to you know, um, camp yourself with in the coming year. So this self-assessment, uh, self-critique is very important for you. <clears throat> now, what we're saying is this, that when we do such evaluation, we also do evaluation in self-critique, evaluation of our attitude, evaluation of our choices, in this year that is coming to an end, what are the benefits of your choices? What are the benefits of your choices? And what are the losses that your choice has cost you? What are the losses that your choice has cost you? Don't just look at the benefit, and that's what a critique is. How has it benefited you? How has your choice benefited you? What are the regrets that you have? And so that, that is why <clears throat> we, 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 we do this for ourselves because no one will do it for you. You need to learn to do that. So in doing this, you raise questions to yourselves. You raise questions to yourself. It's like talking to yourself. You raise questions to yourself on certain choices or decisions that you have made. Maybe those decisions resulted negatively or positively. But at least you can know what you are taking forward. 
You can know what you can thank God for, and then you move forward from there. Again, in self-critique, you cannot do without looking at yourself as a person. What has been your attitude? What has been your response to certain issues? Your response to certain issues? You can assess it. If it works for you, if it works for your dreams, your vision, you can check it out. What has those attitude your ish, to those issues, how has it benefited you? And so we are saying today that um, let us have a self-evaluation of the year that is about to finish. And then we can really move forward and ask God for grace where we are lacking. There is a grace of empowerment. There is a grace of helpers. There's a grace of empowerment, empowerment of the Holy Spirit that can empower you and speak to you. It's a grace for you to be able to even hear from the Spirit of God. And again, you can have grace of helpers, grace of helpers, helpers of destiny as you do this. So the self-critique of what you lack can help you in your prayer attitude or in the items of your prayer for this end of the year, going into the new year. Therefore, I'm saying today, we need to do a self-critique. Look at those things that has added value to our lives. Those things that have added value to our purpose. And again, you know, when, when you do this, there are people also who have added value to your life. There are people who have added value to your life. There are people who have become, you know, um, conscious of what you do, the business you do, the ministry that you do. And so this self-criticism, you are able to know those who have touched your life. You cannot just live without understanding this. And then that will help you to know on who you invest. That's what, that's what you will gain. You, need, you will know on who you should invest and who you should work with into the new year that is about to come. That's why you need to do a self-assessment and those things that you have done, how it added value to you and to your purpose. Again, from there, in, in other words, you may think of your relationship. You may think of your relationship this year or relationships you know, social, business. So self-audit is to evaluate them and learn forward, not backwards. Learn forward and not backward. This is what you're going to gain. So what I'm saying tonight is that there's nothing wrong to identify some of these things so that you will know what you believe. You will know what you believe. You will know what you are carrying forward. It's not a bad attitude to save what you have done this year so that you can live next year more smarter than this year. You will know which company you want to carry into the new year and which company you are going to leave behind. This is what self-critique will give you. It's good to be focused, to be focused on what you do, but you need to assess it. You need to assess it. Self-critique will tell you where were you focused. You can judge it against where you have seen value. And where have you been consistent? Be consistent and be focused, either in your calling, in your career, professional career, it's going to help you to weigh it against the value that you have added to your life this year, either financially or materially. So where have you had focus this year? Where have you had consistency this year? So because there is a power in focus, there is a power in consistency 
because they all gather, they are all accumulated efforts that will surely, you know, um, result into something good. We'll talk about that in some other time. But what I'm just saying, that through self-audit, you are able to identify the areas you have focused, the areas you have been consistent, and you weigh them against the value they added to your life. So self-critique helps to identify also your unique strength. It helps to identify your cutting edge. You know, what you, what, you know, your cutting edge, what you can point to that you are really doing well, you have done well this year, and you want to help, you want to, you know, work on it the more. You know, that point to that which you know that, yes, you've had an added value in the year. And at the same time, through self-critique, you are able to identify those things that were minus, which causes you more or less loss. But minus in the sense that they have not added value to your life. They are then becoming minus. They are taking more from you than adding to you. This is what self-critique will do for you. Both of your personal self, your career, your business. You know, you can look at some of the items you are selling. You can look at some of the services that you are offering. Some of those services may not be what has really added value to your personal economy during the year. By self-audit, you will be able to identify some of these things and bring, put in correction and guard everything professionally so that you can do much better next year. What I'm saying is this. Through this year self-audit, I want to bring you out of regrets. I want to bring you out of certain things that may make you to be depressed and look hopefully for the coming year. It's another opportunity. So as I'm about to close here, self-critique, it's like to challenge yourself. It's like to challenge, it's like to challenge yourself and to raise the bar, to raise the standard, either professionally, to raise the standard even of your living style, to raise the standard in your spiritual life. You need to do a self-critique of yourself. Then you don't have to wait for anyone to push you. When you want to raise standard for your life, raise standard for your profession, you don't need anyone to push you. And I want to say that if you are a type of person who waits to be pushed to do something, then you may be suffering from some other factors that you may not be able to identify because self-assessment, self-critique will help you to identify some things. Well, I'm pointing it out that if you are a kind of person always waiting to be pushed to do something for yourself, for your family, or for your, for your financial goals, you, 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 you may be dealing with some other factors. Such factors include um, uh, low self-esteem. It includes more low self-esteem where you do not have confidence you have to come out of this so that next year mustn't be the same. Another factor might be when you are, you, you, you know, you, you, you suddenly, you've lost interest in life. No, it might be a mild depression that you are going through. And I want you to know this. Until somebody comes to push you, you might be going through a mild depression. These are part of mental health disease or diseases. So we're not focusing on that tonight, but I'm just pointing it out. So you need to be self-driven from inside, and that is what a self-critique will do for you. You need to pray hard. You need to pray hard. You need to pray unto God. And then you ask for help from the set point where you are making no progress. You need to ask, ask for help. You know, earlier I mentioned that we look at external criticism, external help. That is when we meet with our coaches or personal coach. You can meet with your personal coach. You can meet with your, you know, uh, your spiritual father. You can meet with such people 
and that's how you come out of you know of this kind of mental health disease. You need to pray, and then help will come your way. Help will come your way. You know, if you, if you look at uh, uh, Psalm, Psalm 121, look at what it says before I close. That may be just to remind someone today before we close. It says, Psalm 121, it says, where shall my help come from? I love that Psalm so much, and I just want to, you know, just look at it properly. You know, he says, I lift up my eyes to the mountains. Where does my help come from? And verse 2 says, My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. He will not let your foot slip. He who watches over you will not slumber. He will not let your foot slip. In other words, as you pray, as you meditate upon the word of God, the Lord does not sleep nor slumber Importantly, it will not let you stumble again in the new year. That is for you. It will not let your foot slip again in the new year. It will not allow you to make another mistake. It will be the shield. It will be the light over you. The anointing of the Lord will teach you the truth. The Holy Spirit will guide you in the right way. But you need to learn to pray and to hear the word of God when you seem to be depressed. And that's the way out of mental health. And then helps will come your way as you pray unto the Lord. So I'm saying tonight, you need, when you do a self-critique, it will help you to move from the set point. Either it's a set point of, of, of depression that you are, a, a set point of no progress financially or no progress career-wise, from there, you are able to set forward. You are able to set forward. And you will see that the new year will become a vibrant, greater year for you. And I can speak a few words here as I close to motivate you. And you might, you know, you still need further help so that the coming year will be greater. So I'm saying today, a point that came, it says, you have to move from the set point to set forward. You have to move from a set point. I don't know what set point you have right now. Maybe, you know, things didn't just work well for you this year. But you need to set forward. You need, you need to set forward. Either in your marriage, you need to set forward. In your love life, you need to set forward. No matter what it is, a set point. That may be, have been uh, somebody let you down or a disappointment. Don't let it be a set point where you will not do anything. Next year is coming. Set forward into the next year. No matter what it is. Don't see it as a set point, but take it as a set forward to greater heights and the Lord will do wonderful things in your life. And that's where I want to leave you for tonight. We continue there next week by the grace of God. And I want to just thank those of you that have watched tonight. Thank you for um, listening to me and um, as you listen to this, you know, this is not your normal pulpit talk or uh, sharing revelation. This is coming from me as, you know, as I receive, so I give to you. That's what Paul said. So I believe that um, the Lord wants us to hear this. This is not a motivational kind of talk, but this is just for us to set forward into the new year with great expectation, you know, with high self-esteem, Confidence in the Lord and knowing that our help is coming from the Lord who does not sleep nor slumber. And as I read for you from Psalm 121, it says that He will not allow your foot to slip. That is very important for you to know. So get ready as this year closes or the year closes, get ready for the new year for a better and a gracious year in the name of Jesus. So I thank you for listening. I believe by this weekend, the word for next year will surely come. And I want to promise you, it shall be greater. Thank you. This has been Abe Adeniba, Pastor of Shekinah Fellowship Ministry in Johannesburg, South Africa, 
Thank you for watching and thank all of you that have been with me tonight. God bless you. And uh, please look below on the streaming line. All details are there in which area you want to participate or to support this program. I will surely bless you. I will be praying for you. Amen. Thank you. He has died for you to remove condemnation from your life.